Hey guys, it's Cassie and today we're going to talk about the biggest designer bag trends of autumn winter 2022. Yes, we are. We've got about nine trends that we're going to be covering today. Um, just in case, A, you want to keep on top of the trends, because why not, don't we all? B, you might want to forage around in your wardrobe. Maybe you're going to discover that actually, hold on a second, that bag that I've been neglecting for the last how many years? She's back on trend. Let's get her out. Let's have her pulling her weight. Guys, if you are new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're gonna love it here. Let's head down there, subscribe to on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <laughs> Never. Guys, are you ready? Let's go. Also, the uh, bags that I highlight in this video will be linked below for your convenience. Right. Trend number one. Fuzz. Shearling a faux fur moment, all right? Anything soft and fluffy is very much in for autumn winter 2022. Are you surprised? No, because as the temperature drops, I want to get a bit cozy. I want to feel wrapped in a little blanket. Why should I expect any different of my bags? The bags just wanna get in on the warmth and coziness too. <laughs> now, we're seeing this in a few different ways. We are seeing brands um, reissue or just do, you know, shearling or fluffy versions of core styles. For example, the Dior Alps collection, um, she's a ski bunny. She is doing all of that down the slopes. She's cutting up the powder, as they say. Do they say? I don't know. She is in Aspen living her very best life. She is in Val d'Isere, Courcheval. She's in Stard with her Dior Alps. I'm getting a bit too into the, uh, into the ski narrative, but what they've gone and done is they've done this for the Lady Dior and they've also done this for the book tote. She's fuzzified, she's white. Do I trust myself anywhere near this bag? No. But if you're a responsible adult, go off, kill it, swing your little shearling book tote to the high heavens and I shall be backing you in that. Do what, do what I couldn't. Another interesting way that we've seen this is uh, the Jacquemus Le Bambino in fully shearlinged, top to toe, inclusive of the chain. They were like, fuzz, sign me up, all right? I think this is the first time I've seen a fuzzified chain. Uh, they're doing this in a few colors if you really want to drive the fuzziness home. The thing with fuzz and shearling trends is that it is very seasonal, which obviously if you don't mind and you're like, I have my spring summer bags, I have my autumn winter bags, that's great. But if you want something with a little bit more versatility, I don't think you want a shearling bag hanging off your shoulder right when it's 40 degrees outside in the summer. Let's not even consider the sweat situation. I don't want that for you. But I'm just saying keep that in mind if that's something that you're particularly bothered about. Fendi's new Olox swing bag, they've just done it. They've done her without a, uh, a fuzzy little trim, but also complete with just a fuzz. And I actually really quite like the way that that looks under the arm. I just think that it's very sort of like um, over the top 90s rom-com in a really cute way. Blue Marine, again, they've just gone fuzzy bag head to toe. They look like you're a second away from bringing out a pink Motorola Razor phone out of that. Trend number two, hardware and studs, right? So just like big, bold elements of hardware adorning these bags. Really the opposite of the soft and fluffy trend that we've just seen. She's bringing a bit of that harder edge. And again, we're seeing this in a lot of different ways. Stella McCartney, for example, in one of her bags, they've just done a really nice mixed metals strap, really chunky on the hardware there. Then you've got something like Bottega, who have, again, done this in a bit of different ways within the brand. So they've got this sort of squishy, it looks like the cassette loop bag, whatever, but it's got rounded studs just, you know, throughout it. We've also seen the sardine bag, which is essentially a Jody with a, with a abstractly designed fish handle 
again, such a huge design element of the bag. Bring it back to the Fendi O-Lock once again. They've done it in a different way because their chain is sort of tortoise shell and metal. Bulgarian the serpentine clutch. Bulgari in general, I think, hardware is a huge part of the identity of their bags because of the snake head and things like that. You know, we've come to expect it. But in the way that that pouch is clasped together with a little snaky snake slithering across the top there, available in completely monochrome. So it's, again, you can do it in a little bit more of a um, low key way, or you can do it in a contrasting hardware color so that it pops a bit more. Valentino rock studs. The rock studs are still around being reworked in different ways, maybe to make it a little bit more fresh, a little bit more fun. Bigger rock studs blown up apart a bit more. Next up, one of my personal favorite trends, party bags. Say it with me, do a jig with me party bags in lots of different kind of elements. We are talking embellished, we are talking shiny, sparkly, fabulosity. Swing across your shoulder and guess what? You try and take a picture and the camera can't even focus. Oh my gosh. That's the level of party bags that we're still talking about. And I'm quite happy about this because party bags and this sort of frivolosity in fashion at the moment is, 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 is an overarching trend. There definitely is that utilitarian trend that's still around that practicality side. But then on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, you've got this just sort of practicality thrown to the wind and it's just like, do you wanna know what? It's fun and I like it and, and it makes me happy aspect. It's whimsical, it doesn't take itself too seriously. An example here, the Benedetta Brasiches. This is Le Viti Mignon. It's the smallest size. I don't think they do this particular shade anymore it's a bit more of a bronzy, bit of a bronzy one, but they do lots and lots of different shades, great colours, I really like these. They do also tend to sneak into the sale or like discount codes apply to them, so take advantage. But it's great, you know, and it's the epitome of that just like swing over the shoulder, it's fabulous, it's fun what else do you want, you know? Take something like Bottega on the other hand, releasing a lot of high shine metallic glorious pieces. Even my, my chlorophyll wonder, right? Something like that. It's fun, it's weird. And I love the fact that they're doing it with patent because it really adds to that richness and almost liquid-like look of those metallic bags. Look at something like Balenciaga. They have been releasing the hourglass all crystal to the nines in different colors, in different sizes. They must be doing well because they keep releasing them. And they're now doing all crystal versions of the liquor gold. Again, in different ways, you've got something like Louis Vuitton that are releasing their, I don't know the official name, but they're like the soft trunk that I said I wouldn't buy. And I'm still trying to convince myself that I don't need to buy because I feel like there will be quality issues, but at the same time, I'm really sodding like it. <laughs> they're doing them again in like a really, in like a champagne gold and silver. Valentino, and on their bags, they did the, the, um, the loco bag, which was just completely beaded and had crystals. And it's, again, beautiful. And a lot of these are very functional, but they're just very fun and unapologetically fabulous. Next trend, BBE. Big bag energy, big ass bags, right? Totes, namely, if you look at the success of something like the um, Saint Laurent Icar tote, it's huge. You could pretzel yourself into that and be taken on as somebody's hand luggage. Something like the Kate Beatrice bag, you sling over your shoulder, you don't need to worry about it. I think, again, can, a complete opposite from like party bags is something practical, easy, that you don't have to think about. Moving on to a huge bag trend that's really loomed over 2022 and still driving full force towards the end of the year and into 2023 are hobo and crescent shaped bags. Now, seeing this across all different sizes, you've got something like the Louis Vuitton loop bag that was released earlier this year towards the back end of last year that did really well. And then they've just brought it out in a maxi size version of that. Again, crescent shaped, hobo-y, DBB in there. We've got a bit of crossover of trends. The recently released Gucci attaché bag, which nips in even further just to create a lovely little fortune cookie of Gucci monogrammed goodness. 
I have harped on about this before and I will again. I love the fact that the clasp that holds it together is a G. I think those little design elements just make it look really well thought out. It comes in a few different styles. There is one that is just like logoed to death, but it's a really great bag. They, they do that in two sizes. There's Dior's little mini bag that you can sort of wear it in three different ways but one of which is like a fully little fortune cookied little wristlet essentially. Chanel have jumped on this train as well by releasing a few different kinds of styles of hobo bags as their seasonal bags. Another recent release from Loewe is the Luna bag which again I think is a really great crescent shaped shoulder bag moment. She's a little bit more minimal but very easy to wear, very easy to match with. However, trend number six, I am very happy to report that TBE Tiny Bag Energy is still alive and well. Um, it's a lifestyle people, it's, it's a sodding lifestyle but we are still seeing this being released now for 2023. There's still a lot of these mini bags clip-clopping their way down the runway, teeter-tottering, running like tiny little thumbelinas, um, living their very best lives. And you know that this is where my heart lies as well. A few to mention, Versace jumped on this train and featured a few on their catwalk and have been and are going to be released towards the end of this year. Chanel still has their very popular, very booming SLG section which is essentially mini bags that they keep showing on the runway or even tiny, tiny bags in jewellery. Valentino and their one stud and rock stud range. Again, we're seeing it in tiny, just, just a honey I shrunk the kids version. The very popular diesel 1DR bag, which was one of the hottest items of this year, according to the list index. I can't remember which, I think it was quarter two. Not surprising at all. Again, that really only, I think they do it in a couple of sizes, but the most popular size is the little one. People have enjoyed the downsizing. There are definitely people who are ready for BBE and are like, thank God I can take everything with me. But I think especially when it comes to TBE, take risks, take liberties, enjoy it. You know, maybe this is your party bag. I think it's great to have a really fun pop as a TBE. It's so small. It's so small, why not? Trend number seven, puffy pouches, puff daddy. These are come in varying sizes, the very large and slightly ridiculous and let's do a two in one of a pillow and a bag situation would actually be quite useful on flights but that's by the by. Again, we're seeing this, um, Versace did one in a sort of quilted way that was sort of a um, shiny-ish leather, but Bottega really, they showed like a little handheld one and one that was ginormous, that was just smooth, soft leather. And whilst I 100% expect that that leather is absolutely glorious and buttery soft. Absolutely no branding, anything, no hardware on it, except I'm sure that there's a zip or whatever, but nothing outwardly showing. I mean, it's not for me, but I'm just here to tell you that it exists. Also, back to Loewe, they've released their Goya bag in a puffy version. She's puffed, she's soft, she's squishy, I wanna do this to all corners of her. Moving into trend number eight, the accordion bags. So these are bags that you sort of have, you can see the pouches from the side. And whilst these exist in general, we've definitely seen a bit more of them in different ways coming towards the end of the year. The Fendi Peekaboo, that again, they do every season, but that type of style is very on trend at the moment. If you want to take things very literally, then you've got the Gabriella Hurst accordion bag, looking like you should be sat by the Seine River, whacking out a tune. Does one whack out a tune with an accordion, pumping out a tune? You know the vibes. Even something like, the um, Prada Symbol bag, because you can see its different pouches from the side, accordion -y vibes. The final trend, which is one that I think that we can very easily style into our own wardrobes. That's always a good thing, isn't it? When you can just snatch out from what you've already got. Multiples. These are mini bags being worn on normal sized bags or two bags worn at once. 
why not? If you want to do TBE and BBE at the same time, oh my gosh, double whammy, why not, truly? Versace showed this with smaller bags clipped onto bigger bags. Fendi, the models, were holding the Nano Fendi graffiti around their wrist while carrying another you know, style of Fendi bag. So I think it's fun, I think it's interesting. It adds to that utilitarian vibe. We see brands like, I mean, look, we've, we're, we're no newcomers to this, right? If you take something like the Louis Vuitton multi pochette accessoire. But Prada has just released their triangle bag that comes in two pouches, multiples, once again. It's two for one, buy one, get one free, ring a ding ding, we all love a deal. But yeah, it's an easy way to just incorporate or challenge yourself or do something a little bit fun or different or whatever when you're trying to put together a look. I don't know. Let me know what you think about these bag trends. I'm going to leave, shall you be participating in any of them? I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. And I, and in the words of my father. If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.